that, that one on the Roman Emperor, were you going to address that? Well, yeah, something that he mentioned in the interview with Alex Jones and in the film is the issue of the Pontifex Maximus, Supreme Pontiff. This was the title that the pagan emperors held usually, and what it represented in the pagan Roman Empire is the high priest or supreme pontiff. The emperor was also given the title Pontifex Maximus, or Supreme Pontiff, because he was in charge of the religious affairs of the empire. He was head of the religious affairs of the cult state. And so this anti-Catholic film and other anti-Catholics try to say, well, popes also call themselves now Pontifex Maximus, and they essentially got that from the pagan Roman emperors. And this is a distortion and very misleading because when the Roman Empire was pagan, the position of Pontifex Maximus was, of course, pagan and evil because it involved being the head of this pagan religious empire and being involved, and in fact the head of, these pagan and false idolatrous affairs. And in fact, even when the empire first converted and Constantine basically declared Christianity the official religion or the favored religion, then he still actually held the title Pontifex Maximus and in the laws of the empire was in charge of the pagan cult. But as the emperors became more Christian or actually Christian and more pious, and as the empire transformed into a Christian empire, then the emperors, instead of trying to claim to be the supreme pontiff themselves, would give up that title to the Pope. And this happened around the time of Pope St. Damasus in the 4th century, I think it was. And so they recognized that, well, the head of the true church should, should hold the title of Pontifex Maximus, which in the context of a Christian empire was legitimate because now when the popes were given that title, it represented being in charge of the true church. It represented being in charge of the religious affairs of the Christian empire. Okay, And so the preeminent religious figure, the high priest of the Christian empire, and so it didn't have any paganism involved with it whatsoever. And so it's a distortion. Another thing that he implied when talking about this is that the popes before Constantine and before they basically took the title Pontifex Maximus, they never really thought of themselves or there was no evidence that they were the supreme pontiffs or supreme bishops or had some kind of supreme authority, which is clearly absurd. Anyone who studies the history, and you can consult secular sources, secular books, which contain this, that there's plenty of evidence for the primacy of the Bishop of Rome prior to Constantine. St. Ignatius, in about 110 A.D., all you have to do is read the Apostolic Fathers, speaks of the Catholic Church, the authority of the bishop, and the authority of Rome. Clement of Rome, in the first century, exercises papal authority in the East in a dispute about the Corinthian Christians, which they were involved with, and this is Clement's famous epistle to the Corinthians. St. Irenaeus, in the 2nd century, about 180, says that every church must agree with Rome because of its preeminent authority from Peter and Paul, totally destroying what this ridiculous so-called documentary lamp in the dark is trying to present. And this is even admitted, these facts that I've been talking about, by non-Catholic scholars, such as the Eastern so-called Orthodox, who would cite these texts and admit that they are examples of at least the primacy of the Bishop of Rome at this period. And also, Eusebius, who is the historian of the ancient church, wrote around 260, or lived around 260 to 340, I think it was. He tells us that Pope Victor I, in about 190, wanted to excommunicate almost the entire Eastern Church over an Easter controversy. Obviously, therefore, he believed he had authority, and it did not come from Constantine or the pagan Roman Empire. And so those are just a few facts to show how ridiculous and false this documentary, which Alex Jones said everyone has to get, is.
and also just going back, some of the people said, well, like Christmas and Easter, they were on days that the pagans celebrated their high days, and, and simply the church took over those days that were celebrated, celebrated by the pagans, and we're now going to have the people worship the true God on those days, and so it was a conquering of the pagan days and replacing those pagan days with the true uh, holy days of God on those particular days. So it was a taking over of those days. And there's actually an important point on that issue that he just brought up, and that's that basically what happened is that the kingdom of Christ, the church of Christ, took over the pagan empire for Christ. And this is actually prophesied in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 7, it contains a prophecy about four beasts and it says that there are four great kingdoms that shall arise and the beasts which it describes were the Chaldean, the Persian, the Grecian and the Roman empires. Okay, the Roman empire which was greater than all of these others was the fourth beast and it says that it will be greater than these others trampling upon and consuming the rest. And it says, and this is very interesting, that at the time of the fourth beast, the fourth kingdom, the Roman Empire, the saints shall take the kingdom. And I just want to quote this, Daniel seven seventeen and following. These four beasts are four kingdoms which shall arise out of the earth, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, and they shall possess the kingdom forever and ever. End quote. And so you have a prophecy here in Daniel about the saints of God taking over the fourth beast or kingdom for for God, for themselves. And that's what we saw with the takeover of the Roman Empire, and it became the Holy Roman Empire, the Christian Empire. That's why St. Paul, basically, he, when he preached his gospel, he traveled on Roman roads. And that became, eventually, many years later, obviously, the Holy Roman Empire. And that's also why God providentially wanted the primacy to be established and set up in Rome, the original capital of the empire, so that it would represent essentially the center of the empire which he would take over for himself. A true world kingdom of God on earth. Yeah, and so it would represent the city which had, it wasn't there because that city had the temporal authority, but to show that the spiritual authority is universal that's the city he chose for the primacy of St. Peter. Any other points you wanted to cover on the uh, thing? Might as well cover them. Okay, well, he talks about the Illuminati as if the church was in cahoots with the Illuminati. Well, Pope Pius VI condemned the Illuminati in 1785. You were saying earlier that the church issued... You know, countless documents. Yeah, over 200 documents that condemn Freemasonry. And Alex Jones actually asked him, I think, about that. This guy, Chris Pinto, or something about that. Yeah. And Pinto said, well, it's complex. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 I mean, that's the attempted explanation. It's Order out of chaos. That, that, was, that was part of his answer. Order out of chaos. Oh, whenever you're confronted with something that totally blows away your thesis. It's just, well, there are different theories, order out of chaos. But some of the other things in the film, they're saying that the non-Catholics are to be united back with Rome by whatever means necessary. And they say historically Jesuits are known for assassinations, deceptions. Jesuit order, they say, merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell. The Jesuits killed Lincoln. The Jesuits are the Gestapo of the Roman Catholic Church. They go on to say that the uh, Jesuits are to be uh, a Calvinist among Calvinist, a Protestant among Protestant, even to seek permission to preach from their pulpits as a spy to get themselves so that the, the other side can feel confident in their company, to go all extreme to get non-Catholics back in union with Rome, to use the poison cup the strangulating cord and the leaden bullet. This is this, they said that was from I think the the oath of the Jesuits. Yeah, they take an oath to do these kinds of things. They take an oath to secretly use the poison cup, the strangulating cord, and the leaden bullet. How absurd, stupid, ridiculous, and what a lie! It's just hateful, ridiculous, diabolical nonsense.